Hi there, I hope you're having a great day. Well, this is a game I'm currently working on. It doesn't look like much at the moment, and it's more representative of a flying simulator than anything else. That's not what I want. I want explosions, I want action, I want things to shoot at me and things to shoot. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through the process of creating a simple drone enemy that just goes down the screen following a Bezier curve path that you can then control to make them have all different kinds of patterns. And then when it gets to the end, it will destroy itself, unless it was destroyed by the player. I'll also be following this video up with other enemies that I plan to create, including a turret that shoots at the player and an enemy that will hang around at the top of the screen and shoot down at the player. So if that sounds interesting to you and you like game dev content, usually revolving around Unity and Blender, then please subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Before we get into coding, we're gonna need an enemy ship model. You could just use a cube or some other placeholder mesh, or you could go download a model from the Unity Asset Store. In my last video, I created a drone ship enemy in Blender, so if you wanna see how I made it, you can go watch that video. So all I need to do is just import the model. To do that, you find your model in your files, you click and drag it into the assets window at the bottom of Unity here, and now it's in our asset folder. We then go to our scene, and we're gonna drag it in because it's usually, it won't be the size you want it to be. As you can see, this thing is is tiny. So what I'm going to do is go into game view and in game view we're going to change the size to be something more appropriate for what we want. We're going to click on this button here that enables constrained proportions. This makes it so when we change the scale on an axis it changes on all of them. I'm going to find a size that looks a bit more suitable. I'm going to go with free for now. It can always be changed later. Create an empty game object. I'm going to name it drone enemy as well. I'm going to reset the transforms. And I'm going to drag our drone enemy model into drone enemy. And then I'm going to rename drone enemy the model to be drone enemy mesh. And then we're going to prefab that by dragging it down into our assets window. We also want to change the position of our drone mesh to be zero, 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 just so it is in the same position as our drone enemy empty object. What I want is for this enemy to go down the screen in a nice smooth fashion following a path and I might also want it to go left and right and zigzag all over the place. We could use the timeline feature built into Unity which I'm currently using to control this movement along the track here with the player but I can already see that being very annoying to make changes and getting very convoluted really quickly. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a Bezier curve and on this curve the enemies are going to follow it. What is a Bezier curve? It is a curve that takes points to create the curve, also known as a parametric curve. You've probably used these if you use Illustrator or similar programs and Blender has one built into the curve section. Now I'm not going to pretend like I understand all the maths behind this and if I tried to explain it to you this video would blow up in size. I have linked in the description an open source book that goes into all the details details about Bezier curves and a medium article which goes into a lot more depth than I will in this video. The Bezier curve we want to create is a cubic curve. It has four points that dictate the shape. The formula looks like this. How do we use this in code? I have no idea. We're going to create three scripts in this video. The first of the scripts we're going to create, we're going to name Bezier curve an enemy and we're going to want a script called enemy spawner. First script we're going to open up is our Bezier curve. The first thing we're going to do in our Bezier curve script is define our four points that we're going to have in the editor that will then make our curve. To do that, we're going to use a serialized field of type transform and just list out our points from zero to three. We're going to want three methods. The first is get point, which we're going to use to get a point on the curve according to whatever we pass in through t. t is going to go from zero to one, one being the end of the curve and zero being the start. We have a method get length, which currently has int segment count equals 20. Segment count will determine how accurate our curve is. Still works as long as you have one. I like to have 20. And on draw gizmos, which is a unity method, which we will use to visualize our curve so we can see where the enemies are going to go. All right, so we're going to start in our get length method. First thing we're going to do is initialize a float variable at zero, and we're going to call it length. We're then going to create a vector three, which is going to hold our previous point and assign that the get point zero F. So it holds the very first point on the curve. We're then going to enter into a for loop. The conditions of the loop, as long as I is less than segment count, it will keep on going. Inside of our loop, we are creating float t, which is equal to i. In the very first iteration, this will be one, but on the next iteration, it'll be two, etc. Then we are dividing that by the segment count casted to float. We then create a vector three for the current point and get that point using t. We then take length 
we do plus equals vector dot distance previous point to current point. This is just slowly building out the curve from the previous point to the current point, and then the previous point is made to equal the current point. This then keeps on going until the curve is built. After it's built, we return the length. And right, now we're going to go into the get point method. Okay, I know that these variables do not look great at first, but they will make more sense once I go into them. For our equation to work, we're going to need u t t squared u squared u cubed and t cubed, and that is what we're doing here. We have u, which is equal to one minus t, t squared, which is indicated by us having it as tt which is equal to t times t. We then have u which does the same thing to create u squared and then we times the squared version by the non-squared version in order to get our cubed version which is u u u t t t. We then create a vector 3 p. p is going to be equal to u cubed times our first point's position. We then add on to p 3 times u squared times t times the second point's position. We then add on 3 times u times t squared times the third point. And finally, we add on t cubed times the fourth point, and then we return p. And now get point will run with the t variable here changing every single time in this loop down here in get length. The last thing we need to do in this script is make it so we can actually see the curve in the editor. Otherwise, we're just gonna have to guess where our enemy is gonna end up based on the position of our four points. The first thing we do in the onDrawGizmos method is just check that all the points have been assigned. If the points return null, we return out of this and we don't try and draw the curve. There's a redundancy in this code. Can you spot it? When I was writing this code, I noticed there was this redundancy. While this code will work, it's not good practice to have repeating code in your script. So I thought it'd be a good idea to show you how I refactored it to get rid of this redundancy. So maybe then you can see how you could refactor your code to get rid of redundancies too. We're going to create a private method of type list that takes vector threes. I'm going to call it get curve points. Here we are going to initialize our segment count like before. We are then going to create a list of vector three and name it points. And we are going to take our for loop, copy and paste that into our new method and remove everything apart from the float t equals i line. So instead of creating the points on the curve, in the get length method, we will instead add the points to our vector three list, and once it's complete, we return that list. Now, over in our get length, we can remove segment count, replace vector three previous points with a list of points from our get curve points method, and now we can gut this loop and just leave the length plus equals vector three distance, but we adjust these parameters to points i minus one, where previous points used to be points i as the current point. With that done, we can get back to displaying our curve in the editor. Okay, so in our new on draw gizmo, Gizmos, we go and get our curved points and we decide what color we want the gizmo to be. The first thing we're going to color is the actual curve itself, so we're going to set that color to be yellow. Within this for loop, we start drawing a line from points i minus 1, so the previous point, to the current point, point i, and then we just keep going until points run out, and that's how we'll draw our curve. We then change the color of the gizmos to be a different color, so in my case red. We then get an array of transforms called control points, which is equal to our four points. For each of our points in control points, for every point inside of the control points array, we're going to draw a small sphere at the points position at the size of 0.1f. We're then going to tell the gizmo to draw two lines, the first being between point 0 and 1, and the second being between point 2 and 3. And this should make it so that when we have our Bezier curve on screen, we are able to see the four control points, where they are, how they connect, and we'll be able to see our curve. If we just jump into Unity, we can quickly just test this script to make sure it's all working. We can create a empty object. No need to name it at the moment because we won't be keeping these. I'm going to put the Bezier curve script onto our empty object. And as you can see from our serialized fields, we now have four slots for four different transforms. We're then going to create another empty game object. I'm going to duplicate that four times. And we're just going to drag these four objects into these slots. Once they're all in those slots, we're now going to grab each object. And if we move them, we should see something. Oh, the line is underneath the map. Hang on, let's move all this up a little bit so we can see. There we go. We have points zero and one that are connected here. And we have points two and three connected here. And that yellow line is our curve. We're now going to jump into the enemy script and write the logic for our enemy to follow this line. Over in our enemy script, we're going to keep the update method and we're going to add five methods. We have set path, which is going to set which Bezier curve this enemy will be following. Move along path, which will make the enemy move along the path. Rotate enemy, which will make sure that the enemy faces the right direction when they are 
going along the path. On particle collision is something I'm using because the player's bullets are particles, so when they hit, they will destroy the game object. I'm not going to go into making the death animation and whatnot and the explosions in this video. This video is just focused on creating the enemies and getting them to follow the curve. So I just have it so they destroy themselves when they collide with a particle. In the future, I'm going to have to make sure that is the player's particles that's destroying them. I also have to add some death animation or something. And on path complete, destroy game object, they just disappear when they finish the path. We're going to want three variables. We want a Bezier curve, Bezier curve, which will be the curve that we're passing in for them to follow. A serialized field for speed, so we can control how fast they're going to be moving. A private float for travel, which is the travel percentage. Zero is that they're at the beginning of the curve, and one is that they're at the end of the curve. In the set path method, we tell our Bezier curve to equal the curve that is being passed into it. In our update method, which is the method that runs every frame in game, we make sure that the Bezier curve is not null, then we tell this enemy to move along the path. What do we do in move along path? Well, first we get the Bezier curve's path length using our get length method from before and store that in path length. We add on to travel the speed times the time dot delta speed divided by path length. Timesing it by time dot delta time makes it so that it is frame independent and it won't be affected by the player's frame rate. We then clamp that using mathf dot clamp zero one, so it clamps it between zero and one the values just to make sure we don't go outside of those bounds. We then create a vector free for our new position, which is equal to the Bezier curve get point travel. Travel being the percent we've traveled through the curve, and as we're going through the curve, this is getting passed into get point as the t variable from before. Then the transform.position is equal to the new position. We are then going to run the rotate enemy method with the new position being passed into it. And if the travel is greater than or equal to 1f, then the path has been completed. If the enemy ship reaches the end, we will run the on path completed method. If you were to run this now, we would just see that the enemies kind of go along the path while staying stationary facing one direction. To fix that, we're going to go into the rotate enemy method and write a bunch of code that has Quartonians in it. Quartonians. I don't know much about them. They have stuff to do with rotation. I played around with this for a while and this seems to work. First thing we do is we create another vector free for our forward direction, which is equal to our Bezier curve dot get point travel plus 0.01f minus the new position. We then open up an if statement to check if our forward direction is equal to vector 30, which is another fancy way of saying zero. We then will create a quantonian rotation, which is equal to the quantonian dot look rotation of the forward direction and vector dot up vector dot up being equivalent to one y. We then add on a quantonian il, 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 a quantonian this word. I had to add this rotation because I had a 90 degrees rotation error on the y axis. So you may not need this line. Transform dot rotation is then equal to rotation. Now that was a lot. I know. And we can't really test it until the enemy spawner has been made. Let's just go quickly create the enemy spawner script and then we can hook all this up and make sure it's working. In our enemy spawner script we're going to keep the start method. We want to be able to spawn multiple enemies. In order to do that we're going to have to use a coroutine. A coroutine will be running a method and then at some point it will give up control for a couple of seconds or however long you want it to wait or whatever variable you're using to make it wait and then once that condition is fulfilled, in our case we're going to be using time, the method continues to run. We're going to need our variables. We're going to have four serialized fields. We have a game object which is going to be our enemy prefab. We have an int which will be the number of enemies that the enemy spawner will create. We have our bezier curve and we have a float for a spawn delay because we don't want all of them just spawning on top of each other. This will be the timer that we're using in our coroutine. We have a unique way of declaring this method. We are going to declare it as an I enumerator spawn enemies. And now within that method we're going to create this for loop. This for loop will run until the number of enemies specified to spawn have spawned. Declare a new variable, a game object enemy, which is equal to instantiate enemy prefab transform position with a quantonian identity. This method will create objects and in turn will create our enemy. The things we feed into it is the object we want to spawn, in this case our enemy prefab, the position we want it to spawn in, in this case the transform.position of the enemy spawner. Not that I think this really matters because the enemies following the curve will take precedent and it will just snap to the beginning of the curve anyway. Quantonian identity is just to set the rotation for it. We then make another variable enemy called enemy script. This is just to grab the script off of our enemy prefab. We do this by saying enemy.getComponent enemy. If the enemy script is not null, then that 
that's when we set the path in the enemy script to the Bezier curve that we have given the enemy spawn. Otherwise, we're going to display an error to tell us that there's no enemy script attached to the enemy prefab. Now, right at the bottom here where it says yield return new wait for seconds spawn delay is where we put our condition for how long this needs to then give up control for. In case we're waiting for seconds spawn delay, which is the float we have declared up in our variables at the top. The last thing to do to run this is to go into our start method and just put start coroutine followed by the name of our IO enumerator. Okay, now we can jump back into Unity and we can hook all this up. The first thing we do is we create a new empty object and we're gonna name this the enemy spawner. We're gonna reset the transform back to zero. Inside the enemy spawner, we're gonna create another empty and we're gonna call this our Bezier curve, which we are then gonna do like we did before and create four points inside of it. And now we put our enemy spawner script onto our enemy spawner, our Bezier curve script onto our Bezier curve. We then put all of our points into our Bezier curve here. We then go into enemy spawner and drag our Bezier curve object into the Bezier curve slot. Jump over to our enemy drone prefab and drag our enemy script onto our drone enemy object. And then back on the enemy spawner object, we just drag the drone enemy prefab into the enemy prefab slot. I'm gonna set the number of enemies to five as a default, and then I'm gonna prefab the enemy spawner, which will now prefab this entire setup, so now we can just position them everywhere, hopefully. I'm gonna now position this enemy spawner here, around here to give it a nice bit of testing and put each of our points somewhere to create a nice curve. Okay, now we just hit play. We'll go back to our scene view so we can check to see if this is working. Yep, that looks like it's working, but they are moving very slow. They don't have collisions on them yet, so the particle collision will not work. We just need to go into our drone enemy prefab and adjust the speed. Let's set this to something like 20. Now, because it is a serialized field, we can go into this while we're playing and we can actually adjust it. And the next one that spawns will go a bit faster. Yeah, that's a bit nicer. So what I could do now is I could create some interesting paths with these curves. I could have one that goes straight down, one that goes out to the left, one that goes to the right, one that does like an S motion. You can do all kinds. Maybe even have them come from the bottom here, go up and then back off the other side. We can create a bunch of these with different pattern variations, prefab variant them, and then be able to easily create levels by dropping in different variations of different paths. For example, so we have this enemy spawner in. Let's drop another one in here. I'm gonna to have to sort the heights out and stuff at some point. And we'll adjust the points in this one to just be a straight down shot from the top to the bottom. Now we hit play and we should have some coming down the right side there and some coming straight down. Oh, that one turned, it turned around right at the end. <laughs> I'll quickly show you how to make a prefab variant. If you followed along with this, you'll be able to make some variations on your own. So we take the enemy spawner that we've got here, the one that's a straight shot, straight line down. We then drag this again into our assets folder and we can make a prefab variant. So now if we make any major changes to enemy spawner, changing the number of enemies to say 29, they'll propagate down to our variants. I hope you can see that you can take this enemy spawner, then create say three that spawn different enemies and then create different variations off of that and just build it up and up and up and up. And now that I have this variant, I'd be able to just drag this in and I'd probably rename this to something like a straight down line one of the next stages that I'll have to do is making it so that these lines spawn at an appropriate time as the player is getting closer to them. Because at the moment, if we placed an enemy spawner over here, by the time our player gets to it, the enemies would have already been and disappeared. So I'm thinking I create something that makes it so that these, these spawn in an area around the player so that then I can just plop them in and not have to worry about timing and whatnot. Now obviously, this ain't looking that much. I still need to add particle effects, a score system, you know, all kinds of things. The enemies don't even get destroyed yet when I shoot them. But I think that is a good place to end this video, having gone through the entire Bezier curve thing. In my next video, I'll be creating a stationary enemy that locks onto the player and shoots at them. That enemy will hopefully be a bit more simple to create because we're only gonna be using colliders. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider liking it. And also, if you'd kindly subscribe, that would be fantastic. If you'd like to see how I created that drone enemy, I've got the video around here somewhere and that's the end of this video thanks for watching and i hope you have a great day i built this green screen out of wood
really functional. How am I even supposed to end a video? And I hope you have a great day. That's not helpful. Why are you interrupting me for? Well, you want to be on camera. He's already got... He's already got three legs. He lost his other one in the wall.